What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and you are watching one of my narrated Wi-Fi battle videos. Uh, today's match is a mixed match that I had against Space Dance. As you can see for the teams, kind of weird there. I'm um, trying out my defensive Garchomp, have my Scarf Breloom, uh, especially defensive Rotom Heat Form, uh, and of course Kings, Roxen, Chino, all fun things. He starts off with his Moltres, which kind of immediately alerts me to the fact that it might be Scarf. Uh, and since my Sinchino would otherwise outspeed it, I don't want to stay in and take a possible Fire Blast. He's carrying uh, Politoed as well, which means it could also have Hurricane, which of course Hurricane has 100% accuracy in Rain. Uh, so we both end up switching that turn, uh, and he actually goes for a Destiny Bomb, which was a misclick on his part, which is funny because I actually get a critical hit Thunderbolt, but he has a Focus Sash. So I don't think I've ever seen Focus Sash used in conjunction with Destiny Bond on Gengar before. That's a new one on me. But uh, he just goes for a Shadow Ball to get a little bit of damage off on to Rotom. I am specially defensive invested. I decided to go for a will o -Wisp rather than outright attack because if he did go for a Destiny Bond again, Destiny Bond's turn uh, effect lasts until you use another attack. And uh, if you went for a Destiny Bond again, will o -Wisp would not activate the Destiny Bond. This works out very well because my Rotom Heat is basically the only thing I have to check his Moltres, especially if it's Scarfed, because my Scarf Pokemon Breloom is not faster than his Moltres, so I have to keep Rotom alive. I decided to just play it safe and go for the Thunderbolt right there, even though it was very apparent that he might actually switch into Torterra. It didn't really threaten me at the time because I have a couple of things that could take on Torterra on my team. Uh, Namely, my defensive Garchomp can take at least two hits from it, especially if it's a more defensive one. I could always burn it with Rotom, or as I attempted to do here, go for the Overheat, which actually does a sizable chunk to Moltres that does over a quarter damage. I, I have several ways to deal with Torterra, but the, the defensive combo of him switching between them, it requires a lot of prediction to play around, because he can literally just bounce back and forth between them and then wear out my PP, uh, make my special attack drop from the Overheats, he has a lot of things he can do there. So expecting him to switch again, I decided to go for Will-O-Wisp that turn, and he actually ends up bringing in Politoed to set up the rain. Likely just so he has access to Hurricane, which has pretty good neutral coverage across everything on my team, except for Rotom Heat. And that's why it's very important that I keep Rotom available for this battle. So knowing that, I'm going to actually switch out into my Zatu, expecting a Water-type move. He goes for Scald, and a rain-boosted Scald is not going to hurt very much, especially since I can just roost it off or set up a light screen on the next turn. Uh, and here I'm really just hoping that he doesn't burn me while I set up the light screen because I don't have leftovers, I have light clay, so the only way to restore my HP is through roosting. And unfortunately, he is going to get the burn on this next Scald attack, but I take that Scald attack very well with the light screen up. Some might say I took it twice as well. In fact, Light Screen does cut the damage down from special attacks, it cuts it in half. So that's nice. I can roost here. I wanted to put a little bit more damage on his Politoed. It is carrying Scald, but at the same token, it's slower. So I, I know it's not Specs, I, I, and I mean, we've seen the leftovers on it. And so I was hoping to find out a little bit more about his moveset. I wanted to see if he was carrying Ice Beam, but he just continues going for Scald, not even Parrot Song or anything. So I didn't, I wasn't able to get any more information about the Politoed during that exchange. And here I just decided to go for Nightshade to put more damage on Politoed to maybe pressure him a little bit. And he actually switches out into Fortress, which is great because I'm able to break his Sturdy. See that he has Leftovers as an item, which is also good. So, uh, and I'm also able to get one more turn here, which I actually end up deciding to switch out, expecting him to attack maybe with Gyro Ball or set up Entry Hazards. And he actually does go for Gyro Ball, which is great because he hits my bulky Garchomp, which was actually, uh, I believe Ripster was actually bred for me by Space Dance. So thank you, Space Dance, for breeding Ripster. And for those of you guys who get the reference to the name Ripster with sharks, let me know if you get that in the comments. I'm curious if you all get that. But anyways, though, um, him touching my Garchomp with a physical attack is going to take off a hefty chunk from his HP, and uh, expecting him to go out 
into Slow King. I actually just end up double switching there. And now I go out into my Scarf Breloom just to put Slow King to sleep. Slow King is actually a little bit annoying for this team because Breloom needs, I believe, all five hits plus Stealth Rock damage to knock it out. And, of course, Rotom Heat won't be able to knock it out with a single Thunderbolt as well. So, I really just wanted to put it out of commission for the rest of the match, especially because I know I can't outspeed Moltres to put Moltres to sleep. Uh, thinking that he would most likely just switch back out into Moltres, I switch on the same turn as him, back out into Rotom Heat. And that's good because he's not able to throw around Hurricanes on my team just yet, as long as I keep Rotom in on him. And here, once again, I figured he was going to bring in Torterra, but since that's what he did last time, I decided to go for the Thunderbolt again because Moltres is a threat. I really can't afford to mispredict around that, especially if he's carrying something weird like Hidden Power Rock. Don't really want to deal with that. Uh, unfortunately, Torterra is able to get out Stealth Rocks, which puts a little bit of uh, pressure on my Rotom, and even more unfortunately, I end up missing my will -O which would have been very nice against Torterra, whom is usually a physical attacker outside of the odd subseed builds that you'll sometimes sometimes see. Uh, he switches into Politoed there, expecting me to just go for the will -Wisp again, because I really wanted to burn that Torterra, and I, I could also use a burn on a couple other things on his team. And so now I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt, which is great, because actually at that range, it's going to be able to finish off the Politoed. So I'm really happy I decided to go for the will -Wisp earlier and put Politoed at a range where Thunderbolt will finish it off. It is very likely that he was more physically invested on his defenses there, especially using Scald, but that's okay with me either way. Now here I make a bit of a silly play. I guess it was more of a balls-to-the-wall play, because I really thought he was going to U-turn. So I wanted to punish him for U-turning and then set up my Stealth Rocks in the same turn. I mean the turn after. But he actually just goes for Hurricane. I don't know if he expected me to switch, or if he was just going to see if he could confuse or get some good damage on Rotom. Either way, that Hurricane is actually enough to clean out and finish off my Garchomp in one blow, which I was just like, no, that's that's unfortunate. But now that I know he is locked into Hurricane, I get to go out into my Caracosta, go for Shell Smash because of his own rain. My Waterfall and Aqua Jet attacks will be boosted in power. And then, of course, I have Stone Edge for coverage. And I have a Lumberry in case anything wants to get smart with Paralysis or Burn or anything like that. I'm also carrying, this is my Caracosta with the Adamant Nature. It has Sturdy as an ability, which of course was broken by the Stealth Rocks here. And so it's designed to have more power and be a late game cleanup with the Aqua Jet, as opposed to my Jolly one, which is just supposed to sweep at any point in the game, and it doesn't even have Aqua Jet, I don't think. But uh, I'm very surprised that uh, Stone Edge is a critical hit KO. That means two Stone Edges would have been able to, to KO Sloking right out, uh, outright, excuse me. Which is good, because I guess he could have switched to something else to get Regenerator. I don't know. He was kind of stuck there, because he had to sleep one turn. And knowing that Moltres is faster than me, even after my Shell Smash boost, I'm going to go for Aqua Jet to finish it off. And that is actually going to be the game, because his Fortress cannot take a plus two stab, rain-boosted Waterfall. So that was a pretty fun match. I had a... I don't know, I haven't really had an opportunity to use this team. I find this team very fun, because although it is an OU team, quote-unquote, it, uh, I don't know, most people don't really play against Rotom, and even Breloom is less used in OU as a Scarfer. Most of the time you see him with just the the Mock Punch, the Swords Dance, and all that good stuff. And you definitely don't see Zatu and Sinchino in OU. So those guys are particularly fun to use in OU, because a lot of people don't know what to expect from them. So thank you for that Battle Space Dance. I had a lot of fun. And uh, shoutouts to everyone who I battled on my birthday last Sunday. I, I, had birth, I had battles with so many people. I have new rivals now. Shoutouts to Mike Hobbs. Uh, and uh, a couple of the people who, that was my first time battling them. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come and find me and battle, because I had a lot of fun. I had a rematch with Joel Teasy. Uh, I had a battle with Trainer Connor. I had a battle with uh, Cole Carter. So thank you all so much. Now I have content to post for the next couple of weeks here. It's, life is very good. I, assuming that life can be measured by the amount of battling content you have to post, I don't know. It's the little things, right, ladies and gentlemen? But anyways, thank you all for watching. I will be back with you all next week for more battling goodness. And uh, 
this week I'm at a career fair at the university that I graduated from, so wish me luck with that. If I can find a job, then that would mean more time to do the things that I like, like doing this whole posting and battling and uploading thing. So you guys have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all later. Bye now.